Oke okay, pada hari ini saya dah buat satu lawatan uh, kawal hospital typing satu hospital yang paling lama di dalam negara kita is the oldest hospital in the country dan uh, pada keseluruhannya perkhidmatan yang disampaikan di hospital ini ada semua major kepakaran ada di dalam uh, hospital ini dan uh, kemudahan-kemudahan yang boleh dikatakan mencukupi termasuk MRI scan dan sebagainya dan uh, uh, ada kita dah mengadakan satu bangunan baru CSSD blok uh, blok ini yang uh, belum uh, fungsi secara optimal kerana ada kekurangan peralatan yang mencukupi dan beberapa dewan pembedahan yang sudah dibina tetapi ada lagi tiga atau empat dewan pembedahan yang masih belum dibuka kerana ada isu kekurangan peralatan untuk itu dan blok lama yang telah dibina pada 1983 itu blok A dan B itu kementerian telah memberi peruntukan 25 juta ringgit untuk menaik taraf dan ubah suai blok itu Uh, kita dah bincang dalam tentang uh, menambahkan bajet untuk uh, proses itu uh, ada keperluan tambahan mungkin 4 atau 5 juta ringgit daripada anggaran dulu iaitu 25 juta ringgit uh, supaya ia boleh uh, diubah suai dan bila blok itu diubah suai mungkin di dalam 1-2 tahun lagi Uh, beberapa perkhidmatan yang diberi di dalam ward-ward lama di hospital ini uh, akan dipindah kepada blok sini dan kita akan ubah sesuai kegunaan uh, ruang yang ada di dalam hospital supaya ia jadi lebih selesa kepada pesakit yang ada di dalam hospital. Uh, pada keseluruhannya, hospital ini mempunyai 602 katil dan uh, pada masa sekarang, kegunaannya ialah secara baik dan uh, sambutan daripada penduduk di dalam kawasan ini kepada pelbagai jenis perkhidmatan yang diberi ini sangat memuaskan dan uh, kita akan buat perubahan-perubahan uh, yang diperlukan dan mungkin di dalam jangka masa pendek, pelaburan yang kita kena sediakan lebih kurang dengan ubah suai blok A dan B dan keperluan peralatan untuk blok ini mungkin 20 sampai 35 36 juta ringgit. So ini yang kita akan sediakan untuk meningkatkan lagi kemudahan perkhidmatan kesihatan di dalam bandar Taiping dan di dalam persekitaran dengannya. Okey. Which one? The food food poisoning? Yeah, the chemical poisoning. Everybody is investigating it. Ministry of Health at one point, the local authorities from another point, and also police reports have been made to investigate. Uh, because so far, what we know, there has been contamination of pesticides on the food which was given in that particular stall, and uh, we now want to know. Uh, where is the source of this pesticide uh, and uh, and uh, uh, so that process is still going on all, all the people who are investigating are doing it although we have identified uh, pesticides uh, uh, po uh, so pesticide contamination within the stall itself but the the caterer says he doesn't know how it reached there so, so that is the point which we want to to see where it came from and how it did. Okay. No, we we what the, from of course we do things like take samples, send to labs, test. But we are not a 
We are not a forensic investigative authority. So that, of course, is the police. So they have to do that and support us in that process. Yeah. Well, that has been a general, I mean, this is a standard operating procedure, not only given by us, but given by local authorities in terms of uh, licensing of them. Uh, they all undergo uh, food handlers uh, course, they get certified, they know what are the do's and the don'ts and they're supposed to follow it. And uh, so long as they s stick up to that and maintain high standards of personal hygiene and food hygiene, uh, and the hygiene of the premise in which the food is prepared, distributed and served, uh, they can avoid this kind of problem. Uh, but having said that, we do occasionally come across uh, issues uh, in, uh, among caterers, among canteens, among uh, food supplies in different, different places where we come across uh, cases of food poisoning like what we are seeing. Okay. Kajarian Tapa ad. Okay, later. Kejadian apa maklumat terkini yang saya ada uh, sampai sekarang jumlah murid yang uh, telah mendapat simptom ber, uh, yang akibat daripada keracunan makanan ini lebih kurang 63 orang dan uh, 35 orang di bawah masuk di dalam ward uh, 20 orang sudah balik ke rumah. Uh, so masih ada 25 di dalam ward tapi keadaan mereka di dalam keadaan yang okey. Uh, ada yang beberapa yang telah diberi rawatan secara outpatient dan kita dah ambil sampel daripada makanan yang telah disediakan di dalam asrama itu. Already dan uh, uh, kita masih menunggu keputusan daripada makmal uh, tentang apa puncanya. Uh, the early suspect ialah uh, kari ayam yang telah diberi kepada mereka. Mungkin itu yang punca tetapi macam mana uh, uh, ada keracunan uh, di dalam kari ayam itu puncanya belum tahu. So itu kita menunggulah siasatan. So as far as this uh, case of food poisoning in Tapa is concerned, according to our latest details, the total number of students who have been affected is 63, and uh, 35 were admitted, and out of that 10 have been discharged, leaving 25 still in the hospital. About 28, the rest of the 28 were actually treated as outpatients. So generally their condition is okay, uh, but we are still uh, waiting for the results of the sample investigations which is being done on the samples which have been taken. The early suspicion is uh, a preparation of chicken curry which was given to the students. Uh, could be the source, but uh, we await confirmatory results. Okay? Yesterday you mentioned about the dengue eradication enforcement program. Can you elaborate more on that? Well, from uh, uh, the 11th of April, we are going to do a major enforcement program to ensure that uh, we can reduce the outbreak of dengue uh, or the increase in the number of cases which might come in the next uh, few months. Because uh, according to predictive analysis which we have done, uh, based on previous year's patterns, uh, there is a possibility of increasing cases in uh, two years uh, into few months time, in June, July particularly. So to ensure that that doesn't happen, uh, we need to intensify our enforcement uh, efforts now, so that's why we are going to do that. Uh, the Ministry of Health, along with the local authorities and other enforcement agencies to assist us. Uh, basically, we want to send a message to the public and other people who are involved, be serious about this and take whatever necessary measures which have to be taken to reduce and eradicate the temple, the places in which there is breeding sites for Aedes, and uh, so this is important. So I hope uh, public at large, uh, construction site operators, those who have empty lots in their houses or those who own empty lots, they will be very careful. Local authorities will be particular about how they manage sewage and solid waste uh, disposal and management of it. So these are the things which are going to determine 
how successful we are going to be in controlling this program. Is this a nationwide program? It's nationwide, yeah. So it's going to be simultaneously held on Monday? Starting, it will carry that. We'll do that for at least a few weeks continuously. So involving, does it involve police or military? Yes, police, military, JPAM, RELA, and all the agencies. Any particular states? We will be looking at the hotspots uh, areas and areas with high disease outbreak. So obviously, Selangor will be one which will be the highest because 40% of our cases are contributed through Selangor. And of course, in the other areas where we have our spots. Okay, thank you. You got two more questions. On the school canteen. Well, we, we and the Ministry of Education work together in quality of food supplied in school canteens, in school hostels, and we provide input, the, the knowledge input to them. Although the implementation authority is the, is, the school, is the school and the education ministry, so we give them guideline, what is the type of food which should be served, and how it should be prepared, and what are the monitoring mechanisms. We also assist the ministry in training their teachers and even uh, others in being able to monitor the quality of food. So this is a continuously working uh, relationship. And uh, so, the, uh, so that, that is something which is ongoing. And even though canteens uh, have been recognized to be good and everything, we do can get an occasional outbreak like this because the process, the logistic process, can be from anywhere, could be from the point of transport, the person who supplied the raw material, so all of them could be responsible for that. Okay? Uh, uh, no, no. That, that is being done by the Ministry of Education through their staff and their, through their teachers who are trained in this process and they do it on a regular basis, on a daily basis. So we support them in that process, we give them the knowledge, we give them the guidelines, we, we advise them what to look for. So that is how we, we, we strengthen this monitoring process. Okay?